uh, so that folks that, that would like to uh, print that off or, or review it, they're definitely more than welcome. We'll read this tonight. Yeah. <laughs> There's a test on Friday. <laughs> What time Friday? <laughs> <laughs> to the wire, are we? Thank you very much for the staff. Don't hesitate in the next week to certainly uh, be in touch with staff if you have other specific questions that can be helpful for the uh, process on Monday. Um, uh, Jennifer Baker is going to take a public hearing and roll. your budget binder um, instead of going through and, and showing which pages had changed and whatnot we just printed out the whole thing again for you um, and we will have copies of those available as well um, as mentioned last week we we're down to one copier in finance and boy we pushed it to its limit today with uh, trying to get everything ready so it's been well utilized and uh, definitely well used. Um, one thing I want to point out on the on the agenda bill that I just passed around for the uh, ad valorem property tax. Yes, that one. <laughs> yes, um, that the wording could change on that. I'm working with Clark County still. Uh, the preliminary numbers that they sent me, we're still fine tuning. Uh, we haven't gotten the final tax roll yet, uh, so that. The wording on that could change before Monday, but probably not. I just wanted to give that to you to make sure that you had it, and if you had any questions, could ask them. Um, also in your packet are the other standard documents for the budget. So what we thought we would do is we would just go through a very quick PowerPoint, which was handed out just now, as well, on where we're at with the budget. Uh, again, budget update, we're going to talk about the er &R fund again and then where we're at and what the next steps are. So the good news, 2010, this is updated. Uh, this is where we're projecting to come in for 2010. If you remember from previous presentations, we were estimating to use $650,000 of the reserves this year and through reductions in expenditures and, and all the tightening of the belts that we've been doing all year, we've gotten that number down to about 100000 um, And I, that was from the adopted budget, I believe, of uh, one over a million dollar deficit for this year. So um, we're well on track to come in at about 100000 use of reserves. So I think that's great news. I thought we'd start with that. Then moving on to more good news. Uh, and 1025, we had a projected 2011 budget presented to you uh, with $185,000 deficit. Today, the information that you received is a balanced budget. Uh, we have a zero use of, of reserves other than for the ERR seating um, necessary. So how we got to a balanced budget, um, I'll go through the expenditure side first because it'll explain the revenue side. But uh, we've had a lot of discussions on creating that or filling that vacant police officer position. And so we have decided that we will not fill that vacant position. And through attrition, we're actually decreasing an additional police officer position. Um, I'll defer to Chief Mitchell here in a moment to explain how our current deployment is, is operating um, to be able to provide similar levels of service with the staff that we currently have. Um, so we've decreased 200000 out of the expenditure side. Um, we did realize that by going down to that number of police officers, overtime would probably increase. So we've upped the overtime budget uh, by 10000 We are doing some projects that are still within the use of $100,000 of the deficit this year. We've moved a couple 2011 projects to 2010, 
to be able to uh, bring in that balanced budget as well. And then we're, we've corrected the allocation of the uh, public works director, assistant public works director, to the stormwater fund because uh, a percentage of their salary does get allocated across all the areas that they, that they oversee. So that was about $20,000 reduction. On the revenue side, we had, if you remember, we had increased infraction and citation revenue to 100000 to make the police officer position cost neutral. Uh, we are still going to have a traffic enforcement uh, push out in the, with the current deployment. So we uh, are still anticipating an increase of $60,000 worth of revenue with existing staff. But we did realize that without the additional staff members that that wouldn't be quite as high. Uh, so we decreased the revenue side by 40000 Questions, comments? Questions for the chief on current deployment? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you almost made it. Well, we, had the, we had a public safety meeting uh, last week, and that was one of the discussions we had was about hiring another general uh, officer for, <coughs> for uh, you know, writing tickets. And, and one of our concerns, I believe, from all three of us was that, you know, we grew up around hearing somebody make comments about a quota, mm -hmm. uh, you know, well, uh, ticket quotas now. And, and that's the problem that I see in this one is that if we're going to try to justify his his pay, he's going to be very aggressive. And, and what happens with, and I think Chief Mitchell pointed out uh, <clears throat> quite often throughout this discussion, was that the thing we don't know is once it gets to court, how often the judge throws it out, reduces the fine. That's a, that's a, that's a number that's just never going to be static it's just all over the board and you know it, it just brings into so many theories on why how you would justify that position and so you know one of the thoughts that i had that day was asking chief mitchell if we could do it in-house with the current staff and it looks like you guys have, have, have gone that route but and thinking the same way but you know let's see if it pays itself it, mm -hmm. by any stretch of imagination if if ultimately everybody figures it out and starts slowing down, you don't have that problem either. Right. Um, there's no question that out there right now, you can ask anybody that there's people that run the stop signs on a, on a daily basis. There's people that break the speed limits. <laughs> but I just didn't want to see it become a quota book or justification for their job. And, and then find out ultimately, mm -hmm. and this was probably my the biggest thing I was concerned about, was that after the fact, you hired an individual, and in six months from now, you say, wow, this just isn't working. We're, we're, in a, we're faced into a, laying somebody off, eliminating that position. And I don't think that's fair. I, I mean, let's, let's give it a shot with in-house staffing, and if it looks like it's something that's a, it's a great tool and it's working and it's sustainable, we can look at somebody full time at that time. But I, I'm pleased to see that we've eliminated that position specific, and and uh, we'll try to get it done with in-house staffing. Any other questions, comments? All right. Um, in working with Paul Lewis and the ER&R fund, uh, we found out that we are actually legally required to have an ER&R fund. So um, it's, I provided the RCW, and uh, every city that has a population as of the last official census of over 